So today we're diving into my experience riding this lightweight e-bike, which has been, to be honest, just like a roller coaster of emotions with this thing. Forestall, Sirion, diode. What am I gonna do with you? And although today's conversation is primarily gonna be focused around this Forestall e-bike, the stuff I'm covering applies to any lightweight e-bike on the market right now. Let's kick things off by talking about some of the good things. First of all, this bike is light. I mean like seriously light for an e-bike. So if your battery ever does die, you could basically ride this thing like you would a normal mountain bike, which makes this bike perfect for zipping up those technical single track climbs and bombing back down the trails without feeling like you're lugging around a ton of weight. Now, if you've ever rode a full-size e-bike, like a heavy e-bike that weighs close to 60 pounds, 57 pounds, 14 ounces, you'll know what I'm talking about and how much those heavier weights affect the bike's downhill performance. Woo, sliding a little bit right there. It's definitely a different feeling, the weight of the bike. So the light weight on this bike is definitely something that I've learned to love. And let's talk about power on the way back up. The Sirion diode and a lot of other lightweight e-bikes right now on the market pack a serious amount of power for how light these bikes are. This bike right here, this motor, offers up to 250 peak watts of power and 60 newton meters of torque. And what those numbers really mean is that you can climb up hills about twice as fast as you would on a regular bike even in the lowest power mode. And if you want, you can kick this bike up to its highest power mode. And at that point, you can tackle climbs that are simply impossible on a regular mountain bike. But here goes where things get a little bit interesting because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And there's some things about this Forestall diode, including other lightweight e-bikes I've rode recently that have really left me scratching my head. On the very first ride I took with this bike, I had some battery issues. I had charged the bike up, you know, the night before, left it in my garage overnight, which here in Oregon, the temps did drop down pretty low that night. Went out to take it on its very first maiden voyage ride. And as I was climbing up the mountain, the battery is draining so fast. So we're not even off the Forest Service Road yet and nowhere near the trails I'm trying to ride today. And this bike is already at 73% battery life. And by the time I got done with that little 10 mile loop that I do on my normal enduro bike, this battery was completely drained all the way down to about 10% battery. Now, since that ride, I've learned a couple things about these lighter weight e-bikes, like making sure that I charge them right before I go on the ride rather than the night before. Also, I try and avoid leaving this thing in the cold garage overnight if I'm gonna ride it that next day and I wanna have it already ready. So maybe bring it inside so the cold weather doesn't affect that battery. I've also tried keeping the battery door open, which on this bike disconnects the battery from the motor and any other electronics to keep that thing at a higher state of charge. The one thing you have to keep in mind with these lighter weight e-bikes is the way they get the weight down is by reducing the battery size. So for instance, this Forstall diode has a 360 watt hour battery versus my full size Polygon Colossus N8E which has a 630 watt hour battery, so about twice the size. So I guarantee you, when I charge that full size e-bike, it still drains overnight. You probably just don't recognize it as much because you have so much more battery than you actually need. But my last two rides is where things got really puzzled. Forestall, Sirion, diode. What am I gonna do with you? Seriously, this bike is giving me issues again. This time, the motor, the battery, whatever, went completely dead, not operating at all. I've tried pushing that power button a bunch of different times. It was powered on at first, it was at like 97%. 
I just pulled it off a full charge in my garage, so I thought it was gonna be working okay. I was gonna come out here today and do my final thoughts and review video on this bike, but the battery, the screen went completely black. The battery died on me. I tried opening the door down here and resetting the battery because when you open that charging door, it disconnects the battery from the motor. So I tried doing that, kept it out for about, you know, five minutes or so while I switched out my shoes, tried plugging it back in, still nothing on the power. Oh, it's turning back on now. We got power folks, I think. Come on. Tried powering it back on, still wasn't working. I figured, you know, luckily this bike's light enough. I had my friends waiting on me, so I decided just to pedal it like a normal bike. And I still was kind of having fun riding it like a normal enduro bike. And then, bada boom. It just randomly powered back on. What the hell? All right, does it work? Oh, it's on. Whoa, what the? Nice. I still got 94%. All right, see you guys. <laughs> I'm out of here. And after it powers on, it rides better than it's ever rode before, going up into full turbo mode, the battery hardly draining. And man, like I said, I was just puzzled. Like I, I can't figure out if I hate this bike or I love it. Now I called the guys at Worldwide Cyclery where I got this bike from, as well as the guys at Forstall who make this bike. And we think it may be a wiring issue. Like there's a wire somewhere there that is just a little bit loose. But where does that leave us? and the rest of you guys out there that are looking to buy a lightweight e-bike. Well, despite all of its flaws, I really have loved riding the Forstall Surion diode. And I do think the guys at Forstall and the guys at World Ride Cyclery are gonna help me fix the issues and therefore make this one of the best bikes I've rode. But I think we all have to be honest that we're just in that spot with e-bikes and especially with lighter weight e-bikes like this where there's still some bugs and some kinks that they gotta work out. Similar to mountain bikes where we've pretty much just recently within the last couple of years gotten to a place where people said mountain bikes really can't get any better. I think we're seeing the same thing with e-bikes and definitely with lightweight e-bikes is they pack all that technology into these bikes making things smaller lighter more capable i think we're just gonna have to realize that these bikes are gonna take a little bit before they really reach that peak to where they are bulletproof and just as good as your traditional mountain bike. But definitely subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna continue to work through these issues with the support of Worldwide Cyclery and Forstall. I'll do update videos on this bike and eventually I'm gonna do my final review and impressions of this bike because there is a lot of good. I'm just trying to be honest with you guys about the bad as well. And if you guys want to learn more about me, head over to jaredhoff.bike. I got a website I created. I got some articles in there that have been wrote about me and how I got into mountain biking. I got some merch for sale as well. Thanks for tuning in and until next time, get stoked, go ride, and have some fun, people. Woo! <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> oh, a little off-roading. Ah!